Have you ever wondered how many deaths are on your hands? If you think the answer is none, think smaller. What if every little thing you've ever killed were to come back to haunt you? One evening, Helen was writing in her diary about her hopes and fears of her complicated nine-year-old life, when she noticed a brown something with eight legs climb onto her page. She didn't mean to scream and slam the book shut. It just happened. Then, overcome with curiosity and fear, slowly, carefully, she opened the book. She admired the flattened stain of the former spider. Then, with a fitting epitaph, she wrote, Rest in Pieces. She was glad the spider was dead, but there was something about having a dead spider in one's diary that caused one to not want to write in her diary. One day, it was raining at Quail Hollow Elementary School. This is a true story, by the way. I was there when, well, you'll find out soon enough. Like all of us kids, Helen loved to jump through puddles. However, unlike us boys, she didn't take kindly to the worms. In fact, she went out of her way to step on as many as possible. She considered it a favor to rid the world of as many creepies and crawlies as she could. Then a girl approached her. This girl's name was Gloria. Gloria didn't have any friends, and Gloria seldom spoke. At recess, most of the time, she would just sit there and stare at... Well, we never did figure out what she was staring at. She approached Helen and said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? said Helen, looking up from the flattened worm beneath her. Haven't you heard about the Queen of the Flies? The who? Years ago, there was a girl who went to the school who loved worms, bugs, and flies, anything that moved. Whenever somebody would attack a bug, she would attack them. She loved little creatures. She even let mosquitoes drink her blood. Then one day, she picked up a black widow. It bit her, and she died. But her ghost still haunts the school. I know. I've heard her voice. Really? What does she say? She doesn't say anything. She sings. Interesting story, Gloria, but I don't believe in ghosts. Maybe you should. She doesn't like it when you kill little things. Remember Joe Hines, the boy who died of pneumonia? What about him? He used to love to step on spiders. Interesting coincidence. Don't say I didn't warn you. After school, Helen had to stay for orchestra practice. It was late in October, and by the time she was walking home, it was already getting dark outside and the street lamps were turning on. Thinking about Gloria and her silly story, Helen went out of her way to again step on as many worms as possible. At one point, she came to a field where there was a mound, an anthill. Without a second thought, she set down her violin case, ran to the dirt, and kicked it over. With satisfaction, she watched as hundreds of little ants scurried in a panic. Helen picked up a large rock and flattened them. Hundreds of little lives snuffed out like that. Then with a smile, she picked up her violin case and continued to walk. There was a lot of fog due to the rain. She could no longer see the school behind her and she could only see a few houses in front of her. So it took her off guard when she heard a singing voice. Little helpless wounded souls, poor victims of aggression. Waiting on the other side, consumed by an obsession. The voice sounded like Gloria's. Helen looked around, but Gloria was nowhere to be seen. Was this a prank? Had the girl waited and followed her all this time, only for the hope of scaring her? Through the alley in the shadows, rising from the trash can. When the moon is high, we'll send you running like a madman. Very funny, Gloria, Helen called. Though she wished she could see the girl, she searched the fog all around, but there was nothing. At one point, she thought she felt a little tingling something on her ankle. Then she felt it on her thigh. She reached down to scratch it, but... Do you ever get the feeling that something is... Ah! <laughs> Sorry, it's just a piece of lint. 
<laughs> like me, Helen realized that her fears were completely irrational. There was nothing to be afraid of. In fact, soon she was back in her warm bedroom, putting on her favorite comfy pajamas. It was getting late. She glanced at her diary up on the shelf. It had been six months since the episode of The Spider. She decided it was time. So she reached and carefully, slowly grabbed the book. And carefully, slowly, she opened it. And a brown spider scurried and ran out. Helen's didn't mean to scream, it just came out once again. How was this possible? It, it couldn't be. It, a spider couldn't just come back from the dead after six months. No doubt it was another spider that had crawled into the book. Nothing else made sense. Though Helen was certain of one thing. She was through with this diary. She threw it in the trash can. Then gazing out the window, she couldn't help but remember the words of the strange singing girl, no doubt, no doubt Gloria. Something about little monsters rising in the moonlight. Thankfully, the sky was covered with gray clouds, so there was nothing to fear. Of course, there was nothing to fear. Helen knew that when the moon was high, the tides would rise. She heard fanciful stories of other things rising in the moonlight, such as vampires and zombies, but that, of course, was fiction. The gravitational force of the moon could only cause little tiny things to ri rise, like water particles and bugs. No, not bugs. Needing to get her minds off of these ridiculous thoughts, Helen was actually glad when there was a distraction. You see, something was causing the overhead light to flicker. A fly was buzzing around. When the fly landed on her, on her desk, Helen procured a fly swatter and put the little pest to its rightful end. With a look of satisfaction, she saw that the little crumpled body was lifeless. Then she turned off her lamp and crawled into bed. Only sleep didn't come. Perhaps it had something to do with the fact that somewhere in her room a brown spider was crawling around. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that there was so much light in the room. Confused, she rolled over, looked at her window again, and saw that the gray clouds were parting, revealing a bright, silvery, full moon. An hour went by, then another. Helen was wide awake when a buzzing something landed on her cheek. Another one? She reached for the fly swatter, and something caused her to stop. The dead fly was no longer on her desk. She glanced up at the fly in the ceiling, and back at the desk. Then she noticed the brown spider on the wall, staring right at her. Something was very wrong. And there was that voice again. Through the alley in the shadows, rising from the trash can. When the moon is high, we'll send you running like a madman. Helen looked out the window. There was someone standing on her front lawn, a girl she'd never seen before, and the girl was staring right at her. What do you want? Helen demanded. But the girl only continued to sing. Tickles on the neck and buzzing in the ears. Little crawling monsters awakening the fears. Helen felt something crawling on her ankle. She reached down to scratch it, but then it was crawling on her leg. There was an ant, and then another one. When she looked down at the floor to her horror, she saw that her carpet was covered with black ants. Had she somehow taken them back with her from the field? She had to get away, so she went to her door, but when she reached for the doorknob, it was covered in brown spiders. Anywhere you go, we'll be there at your side. No matter where you run, there's nowhere you can hide. Helen ran to her bed. She looked and saw that somehow a little slimy worm had crawled on her pillow. With disgust, she picked up the thing and flung it across the room. Then, overcome with fear, she picked up her blanket, threw it off her bed, and saw that her bed was alive with hundreds of crawling worms. There were ants, spiders, flies crawling on her legs. They were crawling on her back. They were on her arms. They were on her neck. They were on her face and crawling into her mouth. This time there was no room for a scream. Our teacher told us that Helen's family had decided to homeschool. 
However, Gloria had another theory, something to do with the Queen of the Flies. From then on, I've always been a little more careful about where I step. Maybe you should be too, because you never know when... Happy Halloween.